Hey guys, it's Nate here. Let's talk about common date manipulations on data science interviews and on the job. So date manipulations are really common in data science and in analytics. You're typically given a date column in a table and asked to extract or aggregate some component of the date field, whether it's the year, the month, the date, or even the timestamp. But most of the time, you don't actually need the granularity that that date field actually has, right? So if you're trying to aggregate values in the data by month, but the date field is giving you records and rows by days, you'll need to figure out a way to remove the days and just aggregate by month. So this is a common task, but it could actually be difficult to do for several reasons. One, there could be several functions to choose from that either do the exact same thing or they do the same thing, but in a slightly different way. Two, different SQL dialects might have different functions to choose from. So one function might work for MySQL, but another function might work for only Postgres. Three, the date column in the database itself might be improperly formatted or the wrong data type. So you need to spend some time just manipulating that data itself and converting it to the right data type. So that can take a lot of time. So all of these reasons are the reasons why it's actually kind of difficult sometimes to manipulate dates in the right way. So let's start simple. Let's go through one SQL example where I will illustrate a few functions that you could use to extract parts of a date. It's a common use case and something that you'd be doing a lot as a data scientist. Then we can dive into more complicated date manipulations in future videos. So let's get started now. If you like content like this, please like this video and subscribe to my channel. Thanks. All right, so let's take a look at this question right here. It's a pretty simple question, so I won't go into too much detail about how I solve it, but I'm gonna focus mainly on how to manipulate the date field in this question. So, so the question is called inspections that resulted in violation. The question reads, you're given a data set of health inspections. Count the number of inspections that resulted in a violation for Roxanne Cafe for each year. If an inspection resulted in a violation, there will be a value in the violation ID column. Output the number of inspections by year in ascending order. So now that we understand this question, let's go through the framework or approach that we're gonna to use to solve this question. So for every problem, I actually like to go through the same framework to solve each and every problem, whether or not I'm on an interview or on the job. So the first step in this framework is to take a look at the underlying data. So if I click on this preview button here, it's gonna output the data and I'll just click on this output in a separate browser tab because there are a lot of columns to this data set here, right? So this data set again is a list of health inspections. So every row in this data set is an inspection. Now that we've taken a look at the underlying data, the next step is to identify the columns that I'm going to need to solve this problem. So going back to the original question, it says that we want to count the number of inspections that resulted in a violation for a business called Roxanne Cafe for every year. And then if an inspection resulted in a violation, there's going to be a value in the violation ID. All right. So taking all of that information, it looks like we want business name to be able to identify Roxanne Cafe. We're also looking for a date field. So if I go over to inspection date here, this is the date field. So we have year, month, and then day, and then we have a timestamp that's basically zeroed out. So we're actually interested in the year only 2017 in this row from the inspection date field. And then the last column that we care about is this violation ID column because we only are interested in inspections that resulted in a violation. So if there's a value here, it means that this inspection resulted in a violation. So if I eyeball it, I should find a few inspections just like here and here where this inspection didn't lead to a violation. Okay, so to summarize, 
The columns that are needed are business name, violation ID, and inspection date. So now that we understand the columns that are needed to answer this question, the third step in my framework is to visualize what this output is gonna look like. So that's actually relatively easy because it tells us right here, this question says, output the number of inspections by year in an ascending order. All right, number of inspections by year. So I know that I want the year from the business name, and then I want to count the violation IDs, the number of violation IDs, and this will be our number of inspections. And then lastly, we want to filter for Roxanne Cafe from the business name column. And then we also want to filter for violation IDs that are not null. So where there was an inspection that actually resulted in a violation. So I think I have everything I need to answer this question so we can start coding. So when I start coding, I like to code in steps. So I like to apply one piece of logic or one business rule at a time and then execute my code to see if it's working. So this allows me to troubleshoot and identify problems in my code before I, I've written too much. So this is obviously a tip for when you're actually working on the job because you're gonna have a full-fledged IDE and a database, but it's also useful for interviews when you're on interviews because what you could do is you can guide the interviewer through your logic one at a time, guide them so they understand what you're trying to do. This allows the interviewer to follow what you're doing and then also help you out if you're going down the wrong path. So I really suggest this approach whether or not you're on an interview or on the job. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is apply these filters here that I've highlighted. So we have select star from the table SF restaurant health violations. And then I'm going to filter for Roxanne Cafe next. So that's basically where the business name equals Roxanne Cafe. If I run the code, I should get an output where the business name is only Roxanne Cafe like I have right here. And then lastly, I want to remove all null values from the violation ID column because I want to only count inspections that resulted in a violation. So if I, if I write violation ID is not null, I should get an output where the violation ID column has values and there are no rows where there is a null. And so it looks like we filtered our data set correctly. So now we're gonna work with the columns that we want in the output. That's essentially going to be inspection date and violation ID. I'm gonna run this query here and basically I have these two columns here I have the, the date and the timestamp, and then I have the violation ID. So the first thing I wanna do whenever I'm working with dates, I wanna make sure that the date column, inspection ID in this case, is actually a date field. And if we go to inspection date, we see that it's actually a data type object. In this particular case, Stratus Scratch uses a Python executor, so this data type is is really a Python pandas data type object. But if we translate that to what a SQL you know, object would be, it would actually be either a varchar or a text. Certainly not a date. So the first step in dealing with dates is to make sure you're actually dealing with dates. So we're gonna cast or convert inspection date into a date data type. So one way to do that, if you're on a Postgres database, is to use a double colon and just specify the data type you want. In this case, we want data type date. So we run this query here, we're gonna get an output, and you see that it's slightly different. We have the date, we have the timestamp here, and then we actually have the time zone, right? So this to me is a date data type. If you're not on a Postgres database, you probably can't use a double colon to do your casting, in which case you want to use a cast function. So say that you're on a MySQL database. So this cast function would essentially look like this. Cast the column inspection date as a date. If I run this query here, I get the same output as my previous conversion. So I, I get this inspection date with the date, the timestamp, and the time zone. 
All right, so now that we're finally dealing with a date data type, we want to extract the year from the inspection date column. Right, so there are several ways to do this. I'm gonna use the extract function because this extract function can be used across several SQL dialects like Postgres and MySQL. So the extract function looks like this. Extract and then specify what component of the date you want. So we want year from this column right here, inspection date. We're gonna name this column year and if I run this, I now get the year from inspection date, and then this is my violation ID, all right? So the next step to solve this problem is to count the violation IDs so that we can then aggregate that by year. So I'm gonna apply the count function here, name it number of inspections. And because we have this count aggregation, we need to obviously add a group by, group by year, and then order by year ascending because we want the earliest year to the latest. And if we run this code, we get exactly that. We get the years from the earliest to the latest and then the number of inspections. So if we check this output, our output is correct. So a few other common date manipulations that we could do, um, like we just did here, this is a very common date manipulation. You are often trying to extract a date component from your date field, so year or month or day itself, and you're doing that in the select clause because you want that component, that date component like year, to be in the output. But also what's really common too is you might want to filter on year. You might only want uh, the year 2015. And so how do you do that using date manipulation functions like extract? So one way to do that, if we only cared about inspections from the year 2015, we could use the extract function in the where clause. So if we're gonna extract the year from the inspection date and only consider 2015, if I run this code here, I get only inspections from the year 2015. And so another function we can use in place of extract is a function called date part. So we have this function called date part I want the year from the full date itself, from the inspection date, and I'm casting the inspection date column to a date field, right? So if I run this query here, I basically get the same thing I got before, um, the year 2015 and five inspections. But basically this is another function you can use in addition to extract. Date part works well for Postgres, but it might not work for other SQL dialects. Again, extract works for a lot of other SQL dialects like MySQL. So depending on what SQL dialect or SQL engine you're using, you can use different functions. And that's actually what makes dealing with dates difficult and confusing because there are so many different functions that really just do the same thing. All right, so I hope that example cleared a few things up. It was a pretty simple example in terms of how we manipulated the date, but manipulating dates and extracting components from date fields is a very common data science and analytical task. You're basically going to be doing that almost every single day. So in addition to breaking down the date field by year, like we did in this example, other common ways is to break it down by month or day or year month. The same functions could be used for all of those different use cases, but there are a lot of other functions out there that can help you manipulate dates, especially in formats like year month, where it gets a little bit more complicated. So to add even more confusion to everything, there are different functions for different SQL engines and dialects. So depending on what SQL engine you're using, whether it be Postgres or MySQL or Hive, there are different functions that can 
basically do the same thing. And it's really hard to keep track of all of the different functions for your engine. So anyways, good luck. Try this question out for yourself to see if you can do it. This is again, a simple example. We're gonna get to more complicated examples in future videos. So again, if you like this type of content, please subscribe to my channel. Thanks and see you at the next video. Thank you.